Hello again, everybody. Takedown Media. I'm Scott Casper. Today, Nike Hot Seat, very special guest, a young man who's made his life in this sport. And for some, incredible moments, others, disappointing. Those were the opponents he faced because he usually won. He joins us now from his home in Orland Park, uh, Illinois. Brandon Preeson. Brandon, how are you? Doing great. Thank you, Scott, for letting me come on here and kind of share my story. And, you know, it's been awesome, you know, the wrestle throughout the years and I've had so many good experiences and so many people to think and the hard part is there's just too many people to think to be honest and it's just really crazy because there's been so many people along the way who've helped me in all aspects of my career but um, you know when I think about it there's two people who've really you know been behind me the whole time and that's my mother and my dad and uh, you know they've gone through a lot of hardships to keep me afloat and that helped me throughout um, my career. And it's just, you know, without them, that there's no way I'd be here. And so, believe it or not, my mom's actually the one who got me in the sport. So, not my dad. As really? intense as he is, yeah. Describe that, how that happened. So, I started out with, uh, there was a local club called the Burbank Panthers. And my mother's uncle was coaching there. And so, it was kind of just like, hey, you know, you want to try it out? I'm like, sure. And I was thinking, um, Along the lines that I was going to be on TV, like Hulk Hogan or a pro wrestler, Macho Man, Randy Savage. So that was kind of what I was thinking at the time. And uh, it was kind of funny how uh, I had no idea that, you know, pro wrestling was totally different from real wrestling. A surprise, <laughs> huh? Yeah, a little bit of a surprise, but um, it ended up working out pretty well, so I can't complain. Can you talk to me about the payback? Um the work you put in as a six and a half or a seven year old versus the work you put in at 27 years old, um, has the payback for all the hours you put in. Now, I'm not just talking about training hours. I'm talking about traveling hours, scheduling hours, uh, uh, food, um, and, and, uh, nutrition intake monitoring, coaching, all of that has, has the payback been worthwhile? Absolutely. And, you know, the, the hard part is, I mean, there's definitely, I've, there's a lot I've missed, but to say that it wasn't worth it would be totally wrong because I've had so many good things in my life happen to me because of the sport of wrestling, and I would not be nearly as close, you know, without it. You know, it's given me an education, it's given me access to friends, it's, um, you know, it's even given me confidence to go out and speak because as, as a young kid, I was very quiet. I mean, I still am. But the fact that it matters, I I went put myself out there, and for the fact the the you know wrestling has granted me so much in my life, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much how I feel about it. So the perspective of a twenty seven year old looking back on a career well spent, there's heartache involved. There's mm -hmm. um, and the heartache is not just in losing mm -hmm. or not achieving all the goals. Um, one must set goals in order to not achieve them. Being a goal setter can help you in life as a coach, as a, in business, uh, with families, setting goals, common, common goals, common objectives. Most wrestlers have the objective of being an NCAA champ, multiple times some, uh, or an Olympic gold medalist, uh, or having the most falls, uh, the most takedowns, whatever. Um, did you actively participate in setting goals as a kid as to what you wanted to accomplish? In other words, uh, I know that there are guys that will sit there and write out on a piece of paper, you know, 2008 Olympic champion, 2008 Olympic champion. I think Kyle Dake is perhaps one of the more famous uh, uh, kids of late who did that and actually accomplished the four-time, four-time, four-time um, uh, you know, accomplishment well documented by on video. But did you actively participate in the setting of goals early? Absolutely. And, you know, one of the main components of my training was a sense of purpose. And for me, you know, especially in college, my purpose was to win the NCAA championship. And so I trained like that every day. And I mean, it was within every fiber of my body. I mean, I could pretty much, you know, I would do whatever it would take you know, just to get there. And even though I, I didn't win, the fact of the matter is I put everything I had into it and I would have never been a three-time All-American if it weren't for the fact that I trained as hard as I did. 
So looking back, let's let's look back to high school, okay? Where you became, you know, a, first of all, three-time high school freestyle state champ. Not a bad accomplishment mm -hmm. in the state you're in. It's uh, Illinois is one of the better states in the country mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, kids performing at the, at the state and the national level. Uh, there's got to be a, a, a wonderful look back and a sense of pride on your accomplishments in high school. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the cool parts is, I mean, you know, I was just going through some, uh, I guess you could call it winter clean. I was clearing out a lot of stuff from my room. And so it's kind of a mess right now. But, you know, I'm just looking back at all these accomplishments and I was just like, man, I was a bad dude. It was, it was and it's pretty cool <laughs> to think that, you know. It's, Hang on just a second. You and Joe Warren, what is it about you guys of your size and height? Uh, you know, that's how Joe describes himself, you know, the self-proclaimed baddest man on the planet. Are you in that category? You know, I, I don't outwardly, I'm not a, a bo I'm usually not a boastful person. So I, I don't, I, I don't know if I would say that out loud, but like I, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think it's kind of humbling and cool to know that like you did some, I mean, you did some bad stuff and not in a bad way. It's just, um, it's a cool feeling. You know, it's it's awesome. Well, you don't get to 186 victories <laughs> in a high school career without having just a tinge of, hey, you know what, I'm going to beat you, and I'm going to beat yeah. you bad. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing, you know, like I was telling you about before with my sense of purpose, you know, in high school, I really wanted to be a state champion, and that was all I thought about. That's all I, uh, all my actions were directed towards that goal, and, uh, you know, so, you know, like I told you before, I missed out on a lot of things, but, you know, the way you look at it, though, if you're, if you're doing what you love and what you want to do, you're not missing out as more opposed to your, um, you're doing what it takes to be the best. And so, um, I think oftentimes, and especially during college, it's very easy to fall in the trap to, uh, feel like you're missing out on things. And that's, that's really not the case. You know, when, when you're actively working towards your goal, um, you're not missing out on anything. You're actually creating, you know, memories. You're creating opportunities. You're you're creating something awesome to build upon. What was the difference between 2003 and four, and then and where you finished in third in the state title uh, or state uh, tournament? to 2005 and 2006 what was the what was the change because obviously something clicked there where you became a two-time state champ mm -hmm. and you know going back to like i was saying before um you know frankly i was tired of losing but also um that sense of purpose i was saying yeah i really wanted to be a state champion you know I, and another motivation is i wanted to get into school um i, I wanted to go to college and, uh, you know, that was definitely a motivating factor as well. So we take that, we go to Northwestern, you become a, uh, a superstar as far as classroom being a, a great student, you became an academic all American for God's sake. Yeah. Uh, that's difficult, uh, especially at Northwestern. Mm -hmm. Um, you racked up, uh, an incredible list of accomplishments there, 295 dual points. 133 victories, 34 falls. I mean, there are guys that only dream of those accomplishments. You were one of the most driven collegiate wrestlers I've known ever. Um, and I really enjoyed watching and being around you in those those times because you were so focused, yet were, you, were, you still had time to be kind, to talk to kids. You treated your teammates well. Obviously, you were brought up correctly, uh, which is very cool. But uh, not all wrestlers have that sense of balance. You understand what I'm I'm saying? Yeah, and you know that's one of the things that attracted me to Northwestern. It's just you know I, I felt like you know for me personally, I I love balance. You know I, I love being able to have multiple things in my life, and so um, and that's why in my letter when I said wrestling doesn't define me because I feel like there's so many aspects of life to learn and there's always a way to learn something new there's always something new to go forth with and um as far as northwestern goes you know i was very you know i had a very broad uh range of uh topics i learned about so i know 
a little about a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. that's, that's, that makes you exceedingly valuable to a lot of folks, Brandon Preston, that, uh, yeah. that would look to hire you. Now, you're going to be continuing uh, to be involved in the sport uh, in coaching right now as uh, part of the Wildcat Wrestling Club. Uh, what are your hopes, dreams, and aspirations for the future with regard to wrestling? So as far as wrestling goes, one of the things that, for me, that I really want to transfer into any, any guy I coach or teach or anything like that is just I want them to be not only champions you know, on the map, but in the classroom, in their community, in their personal lives. And I think that's important to, to recognize because um, when one part of your life is going well, other parts start to go well, and it's, it's, a, it's a domino effect. And so, you know, the more that you have everything else in line, you know, th things are going to go well for you. They often say that once you think you've got the two, you know, ends of the rope and you're pulling on the two ends of the rope and you're trying to make ends meet, somebody then moves the rope. Mm -hmm. You know, wrestling is a lot like that, right? I mean, it's a series of ups and downs, the challenges, uh, the making weight, the balancing of school, competition, travel, uh, personal life. Now, I mean, are you ready for a personal life? <laughs> well, you know, it's it's definitely probably the biggest transition I have to face. You know, now, now I got a little bit more free time. I don't know what to do with it yet. So one thing I've been playing around with is just, uh, you know, I think I might play around with some photography photography or artwork or things like that because those are things I've actually kind of did a little bit while I was in high school and college and you know it's kind of a fun hobby so you know we'll see if uh it goes further but in the meantime though I, I'm uh as well as uh training um off the side you know I think I might look for for work so we'll see where that goes so you know a lot of folks don't realize that a wrestler's life generally speaking their hobby is wrestling mm -hmm. is training is uh, working out, and you've been very, very good at doing all of those. Is there a high point for you in your career, uh, post collegiate, that you would look at and say, "Gosh, you know what? Was it the Guelph Open in Canada where you won gold? Uh, was it traveling to Russia so many times or Belarus? Um, I could list off until I was blue in the face." But is there is there a high point for you? Well, you know, I, I think. Uh... When I took the bronze in Cuba, that was a high point for me because, um, you know, first off, that was a really cool tour. Um, you know, I was around some awesome wrestlers, great people, um, that got great training, um, got to represent the USA. And so there was a lot of aspects from that tour that I really enjoyed, um, you know, just to interact with people. And, you know, it, it gave me a lot of perspective, too, on the uh, a lot of matters and so I, I think that trip made me think a lot why don't you think about if you can coaches um people that obviously have had an effect on you as because coaches can do a lot of different things they learn how to push your buttons they learn what works for you but there's a lot of give and take between a good athlete and a good coach and when that magic happens that's a career changer and yeah. there's got to be a coach or two or three that have been in your life more, maybe. Um, who are they? That's a tough question because there, I got I have had a lot of coaches who, throughout the years, have really um, impacted my wrestling. And you know, forget the wrestling part, just life. And so, you know, for me to say like one or the other, I think that would do them a disservice. Um, but. You know, I've I've come across some great people, and they know who they are, and it's just, uh, you know, it, <laughs> you know, I've been I've been a very lucky person. You know, I've had a lot of great things happen to me. I've been fed with a silver spoon, and you know, for me, you know, I, I took what was up, whatever was in there, and so, um, you know, I, they led the horse to water, and I drank it, so to speak. <laughs> you know, that's a neat observation. If I say the name Sean Bormat. What does that mean? Well, you know, I've trained under Sean for a very long time, um, probably over 10 years, and he, uh, he's he been instrumental in really just mentally, I think, in a lot of aspects, you know, getting me to be really tough. And, you know, kind of a cool uh, little tidbit is that my uh, 
my high school coach, Mike Poles, coached Sean Barmat at one point. So that's kind of a cool little uh, little lineage there. Sean Bourmet, uh, obviously starting the overtime school of wrestling with some uh, other great coaches and mm-hmm. people that care about the sport. Uh, and it's, it's tremendous to see somebody can start it on the private side and then make the transition back to collegiate wrestling and cle- collegiate coaching where he's now at Michigan. Uh, he's just one of those guys that in your career would be a standout for me. Tim Szeski perhaps might be another. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's been some guys that have absolutely been spot on with you, and, and you can see the effect that they've had on your career, your ability to achieve. Uh, upon announcing the retirement from competition, that had to have been uh, an idea that you had and approaching the idea. And the idea of, of, of retirement from competition had to have been difficult. Yeah, that, that's it's not an easy decision and one that every athlete has to face at some point. Um, and what made it more difficult is obviously, you know, I wanted to be an Olympic champion. I wanted to be on the Olympic team. I wanted to represent the U.S. And those are things that you you feel like you're giving up. But you know, for me, I I knew, you know, I just I knew it was time for me to move on. And as much as that hurt, you know, I think it was the right thing to do. You did it in such a way, and. You and I have talked about this. Um, how you approached your announcement, how you made the announcement, and the letter you sent out, it just flowed out of you. Um, it came out in such a way where it became a compelling story. And I want to read a, a paragraph. And by the way, well-written letter. Just well What a, what a, a tremendous example uh, of, of a classy way to end a career and turn the page. So I'm going to read this, and this, these are your words. Along the way, I've defeated NCAA All-Americans, NCAA champions, world team members, an Olympian, world-class wrestlers, and many other respected opponents. Keyword, respected opponents, right there. Despite the memories and my sentiments toward the sport, I feel that wrestling doesn't define me. It's my fight, my passion to excel that does. It's being tough and giving my full effort. With this thought in mind, I believe that I have much more to offer the world, and I'm excited to start a new chapter in my life. Your book continues. The mm-hmm. book of life continues for you, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm looking forward to the next chapter. I'm looking forward to reading what it is you do and continuing our friendship because it's guys like you that make it easy for people like me to do what I do. You've been a guest host on our show, broadcast before, uh, and it's been so much fun. I'm going to, I'm going to make an uh, offer to you right now. You ready? Yes. The 2015 Midlands are coming up. We're going to be there broadcasting it as we have for the last 15, 16 years. And, uh, we're going to make that opportunity available to you if you would like, as so many have in the past to join us in our broadcast on one of those two days or both days. It's up to you. Would you like to do play by play? color and analysis of the event on takedown i absolutely i'd be honored to do that yeah you know, that wasn't even like you know i even really have to think about it. that's 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 awesome <laughs> now, there, there's your high hard one right there that's the curveball you weren't expecting mm-hmm. yeah no i was <laughs> definitely not expecting that a little nervous but i'm, I'm excited uh, you you're, know? you're gonna be fine and you know what what's even better is you're gonna get to work with my partner tony hager Mm-hmm. And uh, he's uh, obviously a fan of yours, and uh, the combined team, even in my absence, I'm sure I'll be very interested to hear what you guys do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Brandon Priestin has made his announcement that after uh, all these years in wrestling, some 20 competitive years, and at the age of 27, he'll leave those shoes in the middle of the mat, either in person or in kind, and he will do so with a great deal of class. If you haven't read the complete letter we invite you to check it out on our website at takedownwrestle.com uh also look for brandon on facebook um you're not on myspace are you not <laughs> is MySpace. anybody on myspace anymore? not anymore <laughs> not anymore well i want to wish you the best of luck in your career at the wwe just joking um it's <laughs> you know it's been a joy and again i'm looking forward to uh the continuation of your story and see what comes your way and uh I, I, I truly wish you the best. It's been a wonderful experience knowing you. Thank you, Scott. That was that was awesome. I really appreciate all you've done for the sport. So 
I'm, I'm pumped. Thank you. After all the international tours, freestyle moments, collegiate, high school, and little kids wrestling, this guy has absolutely done it. He's brought it. He gave us his best. Brandon Priestin retires at 27 years old. What's next? Well, stay tuned. We'll tell you as we find out and as his future unfolds. I'm Scott Casper, the Nike Hot Seat today. Brandon Priestin's been our guest. We appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Tune in to our broadcast of the Midlands Championships, the 2015 edition, live from that venerable arena, Welsh Ryan Arena, as, uh, well, as we present it again this time with the voice of one of the greats, Brandon Priestin. <laughs>